We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Show Must Go On Line. Today's guest is Ashley Kate Adams. How are you doing today? Hey, show. I'm doing great. How are you? Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, I'm fabulous. I'm so happy we're getting to chat. It has been so much fun reading. <gasps> what is this? Your book. Oh, my goodness. There it yes. is. <laughs> Live we're doing person. it right live and in person it's so exciting a lot of times we'll do a show and tell segment later but i figured let's just kick it off with it i love that so you know we're we're going to talk a lot about this book a lot about your life's journey but let's start at the very beginning a very good place to start and let's hear your origin story what got you into acting theater music dancing and all that jazz so I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky, into a musical theater loving family. And um, I was raised in a family and in a family unit where everyone did the performing arts. So around Christmas time, there could be as many as 10 people, you know, doing 10 different shows at one time. Everybody in my extended family is also a musician. So we've got pianists, guitar players, multiple people in bands, and I'm about to marry a percussionist. So the full band and family is complete. Um, but yes, I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. I had the privilege of attending Cincinnati Conservatory of Music, CCM, for um, musical theater. And yes, I was always found either backstage at the local dinner theater or um, you know, at my church singing in the church choir, at the dance studio, or at my performing arts high school, youth performing arts high school in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. So I'd say that's my origin story. Um, musical theater happened to be the family business. Wow, I love that. And it sounds like it's such a, it's really nice when you have that whole family aspect and the support system and to be able to lean on people who actually get what you're going through. Absolutely. You know, my parents did a wonderful job. They were always very honest that this is not always the easiest industry to get into. But if you can't see yourself doing anything else, then you must do this one. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you say that in the book. And as I'm reading that, I'm like, that is so, so true. <laughs> Yes, right? There's so many twists and turns that we can take, but we have the power to take inventory and navigate them, right? To come out better versions of ourselves. And I would say more um, just like clear artists. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So going from Kentucky all the way to Broadway, how yes. did that happen? So as I said, I had the privilege of attending CCM Cincinnati Conservatory of Music and, and many times they joke, right, that it is a royal bloodline of musical theater to Broadway. Um, but it's not just because I went to that school that I got that opportunity. I'd say in the past 12 years of my career, I've probably been out on over like 1200 appointments. So I've shot multiple darts in my career. Uh-huh, exactly. Um, it, it takes showing up again and again and again to get that opportunity. And my first large opportunity in my career was that Broadway opportunity. It was an immediate replacement as Colette in the revival, the Tony Award winning revival of La Caja Fall. And yes, it was about, um, it was two years like to the day basically that my U-Haul pulled into Washington Heights. And yep. Yeah, I auditioned and I think there were actually three or four round of callbacks. And I was actually in rehearsals for another show called um, Nightmare Alley at the time to play the lead in that show, Molly. And I got the call that I booked my first Broadway show. Wow, that is so exciting. So as people are reading this book and I don't know how much you wanna share now versus like hold back and kind of just tease, sure. but your Broadway journey is, especially unique for timing purposes. I'll let you take that as, as you wish. <laughs> yes, and thank you so much for setting it up that way. My Broadway story, my Broadway debut story is the first um, introduction of the book. And that is truly what I believe sets BYOP, Be Your Own Producer, into motion. And long story short, it's much more exciting if you read the book. 
But long story short, um, I joined the company of Lacage on a Tuesday evening. And by Wednesday after the matinee, we got told the show would be closing in 30 days. Mm -hmm. And you hear, right, all of those horror stories like of glory days or, you know, people joke and they call it glory day, right? <laughs> and, and you're just like, oh, how could anything like that ever affect me or happen to me, right? right? And sometimes it does. But what's fascinating about that is it immediately showed me who I was because in a split second, my guttural response was to create my own production company to run in tandem with my acting and singing and performing career so I could create more security for myself and others in the industry. Crazy, yeah. huh? So crazy. You know, I knew that story because I feel like you told it to us at Multi-Hype and still reading it. It's kind of like the Romeo and Juliet thing that you know the ending and yet still going through the process. It's about the storytelling. I think that's what you do so beautifully in the book is it doesn't matter if you know what already happened. You tell it so nicely. I really appreciate that. And as someone, right, and, and someone who might be listening today, this is my first true foray into writing, right? So to take the time to kind of revisit those memories and try to depict them as vividly as possible so the audience, right, and in this medium, the audience is the reader, right? So they could experience the excitement and, and the pain and the loss of that moment. I, I took a lot of time to, to reflect and to make sure that I was, you know, approaching it in an accessible way but an honest way for the reader to be able to really feel like they were in there in that red plush seat at the Long Acre Theater, right, sitting next to me as I heard this news. So thank you so much. I, I really did. I worked hard on that. Yeah, you definitely feel like you're going along this journey with you. And I also really like, especially in like the forward introduction part, that you're like, this is like a, a conversation. We are, it's not like I'm just writing for you. Like I'm writing and then hopefully you'll put this down you know, take this inspiration, take a, you know, a book, a pen yeah, and write down going. some thoughts. <laughs> exactly. Like I want it to be motivational for the reader. This experience is not about you opening the pages of the book and just being like, okay, let me hear what happened with Ashley Kate's journey. No, I'm specifically sharing stories at very particular times to hopefully provoke the reader and your creative process and journey. And the only time I bring a story up is if it is supporting what the reader is currently facing within the creative process. Yep, yep, exactly. Now, I I wrote down a couple of quotes that when I was reading it, Ooh. I was like, oh, these are just like, they're juicy quotes. I love it. Oh, I'd love, I love to hear good... what you responded to. Yeah. So. One, the first one that I read that I was like, write it down right here is comparison truly is the thief of joy. Okay. Yes. That is there. Woo! It's a big one, right? It's a big one. And you know, sometimes just a, and this is technically even half of the quote because it was longer, but there's something when it, it resonates with you that you just say like, you read it over three times and you're like, this is exactly how I feel. Cause all of us are doing unique things. We're all, all we're all on our own journeys. And yes. if you start comparing to other people, you'll never be at the same height because there's nothing, there's no equal. Everything is comparison is bad. Is not that everything that you compare is bad, but when you try to compare yourself to someone and they're on a different part of their journey or they have a different story, it's just you're never going to be as happy as if you just are able to live your own truth. I love I love that you really respond to that. Thank you so much. And you're right because it's just not effective, right? When we compare to others, we none of us come from the same place. None of us have really the same, I mean, we do have very similar goals to be heard, right? Right. But like, as far as how we want to achieve that as artists, it's all different goals. And especially, right, it's even more challenging as the multi-hyphenate because we yeah. have so many different things that we're trying to focus on within our creative businesses. So I'm really, um, I'm moved that that spoke to you. And yeah, I think for everybody listening, it's like the best thing we can do is stay in our lane 
and focus on our creative journey and being as authentic as we can be as artists in the moment and really trying to not worry about what anybody else is doing around us. Yep. So hard, but so important. So- So, so true. Now, the next quote I want to talk about, I'm going to say after I really introduce how we know each other. So we met via the multi-hype course, and I am just so, so grateful that I took that. Can you describe really what it is? Yeah. So the multi-hype course is a course that I created with two other incredible multi-hyphenate creatives in this business, Kimberly Faye Greenberg and Michael Kushner. And each of us um, perform and express and create in multiple lanes at once. And what we like to call it is the multi-hyphenate. And it means that you have multiple proficiencies in different areas of your artistry. And you see so many acting classes online or writing classes, not many producing classes, but a few. There's starting to be some branding classes that pop up, but we thought, We need to cater to the tribe that is not being spoken for and to yet. So we can cultivate those artists who are passionate about all of their lanes of art. And so we began multi-hype. And it's actually really cool. We're like coming upon our one year anniversary. We originally planned to begin this before our pandemic pivot. And we've now had 42 incredible students complete the program and show from this B-Way show is one of them. So what we do is we gather everybody and we go through, um, it's actually the similar stages to the book because I created the workshop while I was writing the book. So day one, we focus on identity um, and expression. Day two, we focus on um, ideas and inspiration. And then on the final day, culminates into pitch please which is where the artist like show when she was on right she explored kind of like a rebranding and so we went through that and um the artist presents so you actually have something tactile to take with you so we love multi-hype and it is just so exciting to see it continue to grow yeah, it's so exciting. And I've also become friends with so many of the people in the course. It is just wonderful to see your network grow, but also your friendships grow. That's right. It's a community first. And we actually, um, David Matthew Barnes, he brought up um, in level two, he's like, it's the community that that keeps me having to come back in this way. And I think as artists, sometimes it's like we seek teachers, right? And I I say this in the book, it's like we seek sometimes people to tell us what to do, but sometimes we forget that we have so many of those own initiatives within ourselves. And it's just about kind of like giving us the the moment and the time to kind of uncover it. And so I think in multi-hype, we are learning from our students technically or clients just as much as, you know, the information we're sharing is helping you. And I know it helps so much to be in that kind of gallery system where everyone gets to hear everybody's content being worked on at the same time. So. Yep. Yep. Such a great point. And then to see it on social media implemented and see other people taking charge and really like taking these pieces and saying, okay, well they could do that. So I can do it too. Yes. And uh, it's, it's very inspiring. It's crazy, isn't it? And it's yes. nuts when we see things like we all work on or brainstorm in class. And then the next week you see somebody launch something and you're like, this is really cool. Yes. And it's because there was like 10 of us working and collaborating on this. And it's just, it's been one of the neatest things we've ever been a part of. So I'm grateful that you're a part of our family. I am grateful too. And so this leads me to this quote, which I just love. No one can give you permission to create but yourself. Oof. It's the crux, isn't it? It's the crux. Yep. And when I realized that, it truly changed my life because I was so focused on creating the way I felt the system and the industry needed me to create in the ways that what they wanted for me and I had forgotten along the way, being a people pleaser, being a nurturer, right? Oh, wait, there's actually stories inside of me 
that I yes. want to be sharing, that I want to be telling. And so that day, and I also ex- described that quite vividly in the book that I was walking towards the water in my neighborhood and I was feeling this just like immense sadness, almost like a grief of like reflecting upon like the musical theater industry, like, oh, it's not exactly, you know, what I expected and say security and things like making, you know, your Broadway debut, right? You think you're going to get a little security and not. I think once I reflected on that and realized, oh my goodness, like I, yes, I've lost some things. Some things have been taken away from me. But that like actual backup generator, which is the most important things to my artistry, that's from within. So that's something that I can access anytime. Totally. Yep. (laughs) Yes. Yes, we all can. So let's talk about how you, you pivoted. You took this opportunity that seemed like this was the height and then something happens. And now you are your own producer. You've created AK Studio Productions. You are part of Multi-Hype. You're a co-founder of No Reverse Records. Like you've just taken something that can really halt someone and you just ran with it. And oh, g- you gave yourself, yeah, you gave yourself and other people opportunities. And I think that's what's so beautiful. Thank you. Um, you know, I think whenever we begin a new creative venture or making things in a different way than what people are expected of us, we do have to give ourselves the time, right, to kind of cultivate that new identity or brand. And I really am proud of how I navigated kind of adding that lane into the puzzle, if that makes any sense. And I think because I took my time, I really took a few years you know, I still had representation. I was still acting when appropriate. I still actually got some of my larger jobs, like say Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt or producing um, the pilot of Mulligan, which went to the LA Film Festival, right? So some larger things were happening as well during that time. But I also really wanted to express to the industry that I did want to be one of the thought leaders in production. And I did want to focus on the cultivation of AK Studio Productions. So I think by taking the time to say, all right, I'm also welcoming this lane into my life and really focusing on that. Now what's really cool is it's like all the roads are converging. And we actually talk about that a lot in multi-hype, right? Where it's like the things that you do for your podcast, you want it to service, you know, the things that you do as a reporter or when you're in an editorial position, right? It's like this this infinity symbol, as we call it, where it all feeds the other thing. And now what's so exciting is I feel like everything in my creativity is finally serving the other. And um, yeah, I, I am proud of that. And I'll allow myself to say, I'm proud of that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you need to celebrate wins. You talk about that too. Like if you have a win, you should celebrate it and your yes. support system should also be celebrating it with you. And if they're not, maybe they're not the support system you thought they were. Yes. And I think we go through this a lot as artists where because people can't kind of stay in their own lane and realize, right, it's like everyone can win and everyone can succeed at the same time. Yes. One of the things that I learned in my my heart and my soul as soon as I graduated from CCM, right, I was a part of this community of hundreds of artists who were achieving at just like the highest level imaginable, like just with, right, with Broadway and albums and, and other, you know, um, teachers and running other programs in the country. And I was like, I want to make everyone else's success my success. We all come from the same place, especially my 14 classmates. You know, it's just like any time they booked a job, I felt like I was booking a job because we've all been helping each other. We're all in this together. And I think that that's really important. And it's like, if you can think about that with like your tribe or community, like even the way we do with multi-hype, it's just like, anytime I see anybody succeed, like how exciting is that, that we get to be a part of each other's journeys? Like it's awesome, I think. I totally agree. So we, you touched upon Kimmy Schmidt, but it would be doing a disservice not to like talk a few minutes about it. Cause I think okay. it's so cool. <laughs> like, tell us about it. It was one of the biggest surprises. You know, I had just started working with um, a new manager 
And it was like one of the first submissions I think they had put me out on. And it's so funny because right when the show was born, so many people came to me and they were like, Ashley Kate, have you seen this Kimmy Schmidt show? I feel like you and your personality like live in that world. And I'm like, okay, like, no. But then I started watching it and I was like, <laughs> oh gosh, season one. I'm like, this is one of the, the funnest things I've ever seen in my life. Like, I love this girl's energy and like the essence of Ellie's character. I'm like, yes. and of course, one of the most inspirational people in the entertainment sector of being a writer and a producer and an actor, Tina Fey created it. I'm like, of course. So yeah, I, I booked the show and I remember I found out really late at night. I was babysitting one night and my manager called me. He's like, good news comes late at night. And it was incredible. <laughs> and I got to work for a week on the show and actually, um, my first day of shooting, which was in town in Manhattan, I had my like honey wagon, you know, right there on Broadway and 57th street. And I was like, this is insane. Like, this is the epitome of dreams coming true. I'm literally getting ready to be on one of my favorite shows I've ever seen comedies, you know, it's amazing. And, um, it was really cool because Miss Tina Fey herself was on set, um, wow. that first day. And actually it was the day before her father passed. And that was a really important reflection to have now that I've gone through that loss as well. But um, I remember I connected with her <laughs> once because I flubbed a line and she came up <laughs> and she, she like told me like the comedic beat and you're like, oh my gosh, am I letting one of my heroes down? But that was like a great moment. And then I remember she like asked me something about crew um, and like I gave her the answer and helped her out, but I could tell like her energy was a little different than I expected. And it was because she was navigating this huge, you know, personal loss at the time. And she's just someone who's continued, you know, to inspire me just over my, my time. And what's crazy is when I went back to set and we were filming at Broadway stages in Greenpoint, when we were doing, um, the scenes at the party, um, she was not on set because of that loss, mm -hmm. but I Whoa. also sold um, my first TV show that I created with my friends, Rules of Cool, which was one of the first web series in New York um, at the time from also being on set. So I was like in my dressing room at the same time trying to negotiate with my literary agent. Like it was kooky. So it was just one of those special moments where I was like, I'm supposed to be here right now and I'm on the right path. You know, yeah. well, so many different elements just kind of hitting you and you're trying to take it all in and sounds like a special, a challenging, but at the end of the day, what was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. It was a nice goal post to hit and I'm grateful for it. Yeah, definitely. So we've got a comment here saying, I like the plans behind you. And I also commented about those beforehand. I love this look you've got going on. Thank you so much. And you can't really see it right now, but to my left, there is a uh, Monstera and there is a snake plant. So <laughs> I have learned very much. My fiance, he is the one with the green thumb. So thank you so much, Paris. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, you know, you also talk about in the book about living and working in the same space, but you've really mm -hmm. like, you've beat all of us to the punch when it comes to like having to do that with the pandemic. Like you were, this wasn't something that you navigated just now. You've been doing it for a while, right? Yep. So I built my production company on this kitchen table, um, literally nine years ago. And I've done everything from this kitchen table. We've had table reads here, strategy meetings. And it's funny. I was talking about this earlier today. You know, I've been on a few panels with other producers. Most of them are 40, 50 year old, 60 men. Right. And I'll be on a panel. And I remember one happened. Um, it was at a off Broadway true conference and they like looked at me like I was crazy where I was like, I'm, yeah, I'm working from home because when you're filming, you're on location or you're on set or when you're teaching, you're usually in a studio or in rehearsal, you're in a rehearsal space. So it's saving money on overhead costs to just roll out of bed and start working. And so, yeah, during the pandemic, I was like set up for success. And I think because I was already comfortable in my working environment, 
that's one of the things that allowed me to say, oh my gosh, like I actually think I could write a book here and do something really scary and different, you know, because I had done that before here in this space. <laughs> so let's talk about the book writing process. What actually goes into that? Girlfriend. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting. I think when we're supposed to step into kind of like this next level of our creativity or careers, we we have things inside of us that need to come out. So I didn't think that I was going to be able to like write an outline or chapter list easily. But when the opportunity presented itself, I was literally babysitting. The child I was with was in their class. I was sitting in a waiting room and I, the chapters came out of me in linear order within like 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay, like maybe we're on to something here. And if I can be really honest for fellow creatives listening, a really strong outline helps. And I started with, you know, the chapter titles. And then when observing the chapter titles, I realized, oh, there's definitely, you know, four clear parts to the book, right? And then um, I literally just sat down. I, I had written a screenplay previous, and that is literally the only other thing I've ever written other than school projects. And I learned from that process that I kind of wrote in like two to three hour spurts. So that's what I did. And I blocked out basically um, 30 writing days. I had blocked out 40 and I was actually teaching multi-hype at night for some of them. And I would literally wake up, get to the desk and I would just write and exert what I could. And then I would go back after I did the first draft, you know, go back in, re-navigate, um, you know, all that stuff. And then I have a friend, Kristen Seavey, and she was my um, my editor, just like for grammatical errors. And I'm really proud of what I did though, being a first time writer, because I'd say 98, 98, yeah, 98 point like 9% of what you see in the book is literally what came out of my body on Google Docs. Wow. <laughs> Very impressive. So maybe we might be onto something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and I love this uh, quote from Ali Stroker. Love, love, love Ali Stroker, Tony Award winning actress. And the best. BYOP is a must read for any artist who is ready to achieve their highest potential. Pretty okay. cool, huh? Thank you, what was Ali. that? Right? Thank you. What was that like when you uh, saw this book for the first time and you were able to hold it? Who? what? It was one of the most um, meaningful moments that I've had, I think, in my career, because this whole process, right, this pandemic, this pivot to write a book, it was so unexpected. And I just showed up every day, took action, much like what I preach, if you will, in the book. I'm like, I'm doing it right now with you. I'm doing something scary. I'm new doing something different. It's like, if I can do this, so can you, you know? Yeah. And it really worked out to be a magical day. You know, we've been very respectful of the pandemic. We only saw two different couples, like kind of throughout the past year, other than immediate family in New York. Like the people who we were hanging out with before we knew we had to be locked down on quarantine were like, great, that's like our bubble. And I was very lucky we had our quarantine crew and it was actually Valentine's Day when I held the book for the first time and I made that video of it. Um, and literally the head of publishing got to hand it to me because she also lived in Brooklyn. Like it was crazy. <laughs> and um, it was just one of those most um, magical moments where it's just like, okay, this was new, this was scary, this was uncharted territory, but here we are, I'm accomplishing this. And I'm so excited to just cheer other artists on in, in their journey, right? Especially coming back from this pandemic, I just feel like it's like everybody needs a little hug and like a little cheerleader. And, and that's what I want to be. I want to be that mm -hmm. for, for you if I can be, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I feel that I agree so, so much. And I think anyone who reads this book, they're really going to feel like you are helping to guide them along and you're cheering them on and that you yourself can do it. You don't need anyone else to tell you because no one else can tell you. You have to give yourself the permission and you might have to tell yourself that 10 times. I mean, this is one of the things that I came away with from multi-hype and this book. Again, it was almost like a refresher course because I said, okay, like you are meant to be doing 
doing what you're doing. You're serving this community that clearly enjoys what you're doing. Keep doing it. That's right. And I feel like so many times when we're trying something new, it's like you're you're throwing darts, right? So you you don't always know what's landing. You don't always know what is working within your community, but I do believe, right, if you remain consistent and you continue to listen to that community, they're going to tell you like what they need from you and how you can best serve them. And I just felt because the classes were happening, because the BYOP live was was affecting like the few people who were showing up, I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool to take all of these teachings and put it in a in a book so it can reach multiple people, even if I never get to meet with them face to face. So yeah, pretty cool. So I want to make sure we talk about this giveaway. We have a fun giveaway going on. So on Instagram, we've been talking about it. But now is a great time to also talk about it. Ah, so ah, if you want a copy of this, A, you can pre-order it. But B, if you're like, I want to see if I can test my luck, then head over to BUA Show Podcast on Instagram and you'll see the, all the rules going on. You follow BUA Show, BUA Show Podcast, Ashley Kate Adams, and BYOP. It's all laid out for you there. Um, also, Karis, for commenting, you get a bonus entry. So <gasps> exciting. Ooh, I know. Really exciting. So anyone else watching, you can comment along right now and I will be making a note of that. And, you know, originally I was saying that we should end the, the contest tonight. But I think, what do you think? If we give it a few extra days that people can comment along after this video too. I think that's great. We'll give awesome. as many people the opportunity to watch it as possible. Perfect. I love that. So yeah, by Friday, we will announce a winner and that'll be so exciting. And tell everyone like how they can pre-order the whole like book yes. launch events, everything. Thank you so much for asking all of these questions. So I think the best thing that you can do if you have enjoyed this interview and you want to support, obviously you can pre-order the book. Um, I actually met with the publisher today and we'd love for you to start pre-ordering through Barnes and Noble as well. So if you go to Barnes and Noble online, you could find it. It's also available at Pals Online, Books a Million, and of course, Amazon. And on Tuesday, May 4th, the ebook will be available. So even if you've watched this and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can, you know, afford the entire book, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be the first group of friends to find out we're going to do a 99 cent flash sale for the ebook. So, you know, we're just going to ask all of our multi high family, right? Anybody listening to this interview, if you want to support, just get the ebook for a dollar starting May 4th for that week. And then also coming up is the audiobook. So I recorded with my own voice the audiobook, and it also features an original score by the incredible composer Blake Allen. So it's going to be just like a really great environment to experience the book through. And then the book birthday, um, the publishing date is August 10th. So many things to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be a really exciting year. We've got an exciting spring and summer and then fall because I'm having a wedding. So it's <laughs> yes, mazel tov. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I want to make sure we get to everything. I've, I've written some extra notes and, um, yeah. you know, we've talked a lot about this book because it is wonderful and that's what we want to talk about. But also like, we should rewind a little bit and talk about some of like your early stuff too, which I think is just so cool. And as I was reading, I was like taking a moment to also research some of these projects you were working on. And I thought the combination was really fun. So can we talk about Gay Bride of Frankenstein, please? Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> um, what a gift that show has been to me. It uncovered so much about my artistry it is the first show out of college that I booked, um, thanks to the support and pushing of Daryl Eisenberg. And she, you know, has been truly one of the biggest um, 
just champions in my career. And, you know, when, when I got straight out of college, I graduated with all of the, you're the one that I want girls and all the legally blonde reality TV show girls. So many times it'd be down to me and a winner of the, one of the two shows. Like it was this, this happened literally like at almost like two, three times a week, you know? Wow. And, um, I was very fortunate that Gay Bride of Frankenstein was finally an opportunity that did get to go my way. And um, the show means the world to me. I connected with a band. I connected with the composer and the writer, Billy Butler. He's one of my very dearest friends and best friends. And um, it was incredible because we got to collaborate from Nymph. And when I received the Broadway news and I had my little bit of money saved up, I realized, oh my gosh, I want to take it to help further the life of Gay Bride of Frankenstein to help the show, right? The property itself, but also, you know, maybe to give myself an additional opportunity in my career. And I'm just really proud because that's what it did. The show has continued to have a life and we celebrated a little over a year ago at Rockwood Music Hall for the 10 year anniversary reunion concert. But yeah, when I originally did the role, I starred opposite Im Hunton, who is now starring on Freeform's um, Good Trouble. But it's so funny because we all we all started out all together, and the show is so much fun. It's a phenomenal rock and roll uh, fairy tale book musical. So I mean, you can't go wrong. And I got to play Chloe, and then she turns into Liza, the gay bride of Frankenstein, on Halloween night. So. You best bet that rock and roll band, the Monster Makers, will be playing at my wedding because it takes place on Halloween night. <laughs> yes, How's love that? this. So, Gay Bride <laughs> is still very much prevalent in my life. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal show. If you love Rocky Horror, right? Anything close to that, any of the Howard Hughes films, it's for you. Wow, I love that. Now, and that's where Blue Rhapsody is from, is that right? Yes. And that song was written specifically for my voice. So that wow. was after Nymph. So we okay. continued to um, extend the show and the writer and composer um, felt inspired to give Liza another song. And so he wrote Blue Rhapsody. That's so exciting. So anyone who's watching this, you can actually see there's a music video on your website. There is, and it's crazy because I produced that album, and that was the first album I produced. And yes. I think it ended up coming out 2012, and then here we are now, 2021, and who knew I'd have my own record label? That's so <laughs> exciting. So why don't you take a moment to like just walk through to anyone who might be watching and saying, I also want to be a producer beyond getting the book. Yes, everyone go get that book. But I think there's also some young people who are just like, can I do it? I don't know if I can really do that. Yeah, I think the best thing that you can do is start to take initiative on your own works. I think that's one of the best ways to kind of gain knowledge and experience and also like offering your fellow creatives help, right? We all have different gifts. We all have different things that we're strong at and that we're, you know, good at. And by offering your services to others, it's a really great way to like get your chops and so I think if you are interested in becoming a producer, see how you could be of service within your own community, within your own creative circles. I think because of the pandemic pivot, it's a crazy time right now, but that means all the rules, they're out the window. They don't truly exist. Many of the gatekeepers are gone now. So it's a great opportunity to produce something online, right? To navigate something like StreamYard, right? You know? host your own reading of one of your classmates' new works. Um, I think getting your hands dirty is the quickest way from like point A to point Z. So yeah, jump right in, dive right in. Perfect, okay. yeah, take control. A producer can do is take initiative. So yeah. take initiative with what you have around you because there's more than you probably realize. Ooh, yeah. feeling inspired all over again. <laughs> to round it out, let's just hear everything um, where everyone can find you on social media and like anything you came into today wanting to make sure to get out there. Oh, well, thanks so much. So I'm Ashley Kate Adams. If you want to um, stay caught up with me, 
You can always check out my website, ashleykateadams.com. It's also a really quick um, pre-order link there for the book as well. You can follow me on Instagram at Ashley Kate Adams, or you can follow BYOP on Instagram at BYOP underscore NYC. Um, you can also follow my record label, No Reverse Records at No Reverse Records. And um, yeah, by following me on Instagram, I make sure that that link tree is updated every single day. So as long as you're following me on Instagram, you'll be able to find anything you need as quickly as possible. I love that. The link tree is so helpful. I was able to just Isn't it? go right there. So boop, boop, boop. <laughs> we love efficiency. And as a quick thing, y'all can find me at BWA Show. That's B W A Y S H O everywhere and BWA Show Podcast. So if you want to get in touch with anything, like you said, Instagram is perfect and you can just get everywhere. Um, and I just, um, I thank you. I congratulate you on your book. This really is superb. I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to read it and I hope everyone else does too. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Yes. Thank y'all. Bye. Have a great day and see you at the show.